I'm excited to have author and expert beekeeper Howland Blackinson with us tonight. Thank you so much for being here. Adam, my pleasure, really. Thank you. You have been keeping bees for nearly 40 years. First question, how important are they to our whole ecosystem? Well, actually bees, honeybees in particular, are very important. You know, one third of everything you put in your mouth to eat is the result of honeybee pollination. So without the honeybees, we'd be in a mess. So they're very important. Yeah, that is a huge percentage of, of our food. So um, we need them, I, I, I understand that. But how do wasps, yellow jackets, hornets, and all those other types of, of bees, uh, if you will, play into the equation? Do they have any important role too? Well, everybody has an important role one way or the other. There are thousands of different types of bees, but it's the honeybees that are the most effective pollinators for a number of reasons. But they, they do a really expert job. But other insects, other wasps, hornets, and the birds and bats, they all do pollination too. How does climate change impact the bees and what they've been going through here over the last several years and decades? Have you noticed any of those changes yourself in your time as a beekeeper? Well, I have. Um, the, you know, the climate change brings with it, uh, in some areas, uh, more rain than we've had in the past. And when there's more rain, the bees can't get out to forage for food. So they go into the winter with less food, and that could be devastating to a hive. Or on the other extreme, if there's uh, no rain at all, the flowers don't produce well. So they don't produce the nectar and pollen that the bees use to eat. And again, they go into the winter when they need to survive through the winter without the necessary foods. So these big swings in, in climate change can make a big difference for not only many things, but for the bees too. I know something that's been brought up a lot over the last several years is colony collapse. What's the latest with that? Have we made any progress in terms of reverting that or is this still a big issue? It's still an issue, and uh, although we've made progress, a lot of smart people working on this, it's really not any one thing, really. It's sort of a cocktail of things that have come together that uh, we, we think very much is the cause for it, which includes uh, things like pollution, includes things like um, uh, pesticides being used, includes things like poor nutrition, and uh and 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 also the environment in that there's less forage for the bees because of the way we farm these days with acres and acres of only one crop so they don't get the diversity of food sources and uh, or just the building of many cities and urban areas it takes away their foraging area so, so what can... um, they all contribute to colony collapse and pesticides too so what can we do as individuals to kind of help revert that and keep them going in that right direction? Well, one thing, if you're a gardener or living in a, a, more, a more suburban area, um, you can uh, watch out for what you're using in terms of pesticides. There's a classification of pesticides called neonicotinoids that have been linked to really devastating effects on honeybees particularly. So you can choose not to use those. And uh, there are other alternatives. Uh, the other thing you can do is become a beekeeper. And then you can really, hi, Willow. <laughs> then you can really, um, you know, be, take care of bees and add to the population of bees and, and take care of them yourself. It looks like you've got some four-legged helpers there to, to help you out as well. How cute are they? Uh, now, I've heard that honeybees can predict the weather. Is that true? It is true. We beekeepers know it. And even some studies recently proved that it's the case because the studies show that right in the day or two before a significant weather event, the honeybees spend longer outside of the hive into the early evening foraging for food, and they gather more food than normal. And it's like we do if we know there's a hurricane coming, for example, we all run to the grocery store and buy as much as we can, right? And uh, the bees are doing the same thing. They're stocking their pantry with food because they know weather's coming. And it must be their ability to sense changes in the barometric pressure. And I understand that bees can control their own weather in their own environment as well. How so? That's amazing, actually. They can control their own weather 
in their colony. And for example, um, in the very hot weather, you'll notice that all, nearly all of the bees, tens of thousands of them, are all on the outside of the hive, cooling off. They're not only cooling off, but they're providing more room inside the hive for the cool breezes to waft through the hive and cool the little larvae, or baby bees, if you will. And uh, that really helps drop the temperature inside the hive. Then in the winter, uh, when it's freezing cold outside, they can maintain the temperature inside of in the upper 60s or 70 degrees, even if it's 10 below zero outside, by vibrating muscles in their wings. And that creates heat and they cluster together like the penguins do, if you ever saw that movie of the Penguin March or whatever it was called. And uh, they generate their heat so they can cool the hive and they can heat the hive as needed. That is so fascinating. One of my undergrad classes, I remember learning that they're able to communicate as well and how they fly in a figure eight. They'll point to the food and how big the that eight shape is. We'll tell them how far. I, I really think that we don't give these creatures enough credit. They are amazing. They really truly are. I've been doing this for a lot of years now and there's not anything that I find more fascinating than the life inside the honeybee hive. It's just remarkable. Howland, thank you so much for being here. This is such great information, and, and I hope that uh, we can have you back again sometime soon to learn some more. Adam, thanks, and have a beautiful day. Hey, AccuWeather fans, if you want to see more videos like this, check out some of our other ones right here. And if you like what you see, make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for more from AccuWeather.